uh, these next two cats, Drew, they have gotten the curriculum into the legitimate school system. I mean, for real. I thought it was the Los Angeles school system. Well, <laughs> it used to be legit. <laughs> Please welcome Brian Fritz and Michael Sinclair. Hey, hey everybody. everybody. How are you doing? Hey, guys. Pay no attention to my uh, <laughs> yeah, banana. He's had, a, he's had a tough night. <laughs> I have. Don't worry about it, it. It is kind of amazing to me, somebody that lives here in L.A., that you got such a big thing into the L.A. school system. It's like quite an accomplishment. Can you take us through a little bit about how you got that done? Sure. Yeah, we. Uh, it's been um, years that we've I've, that I've been aware of uh, of teach rock and rock and roll forever. Um, and so when we saw the shows uh, and met everybody backstage, we met um, uh, Bill and Randa, and we talked about you know bringing it to our school. So uh, I had some PD, some professional developments, uh, and Brian participated. And it turned out that Brian had at another school taught Teach Rock and, and integrated into an entire semester uh, of one of his classes, and he was really enthused about it. Um, and so we talked about the concept of, hey, could we make it into a course? And so I collaborated with Brian. Brian really wrote the course up based on basically the Teach Rock curriculum. And we went through the process of our district. And Brian, I think uh, it was, well, didn't we do start this in February? I think, yes, uh, I, I, I taught the course several years ago. Just on, I, we called it something else because you know we have to fall under an approved course list, and so I called it culture awareness. And I, I taught history of rock and roll and used the curriculum. Um, and then when I became a teacher at Bravo, I, you know, I, Mike and I ran into each other and it, it came up a conversation. We said, "Well, let's get this approved." Um, and so uh, we wrote up a curriculum and went through the approval process. Uh, and now it's an approved course for LUSD for any teacher to take the opportunity to teach it. Um, and so we're super excited. We're going to have it uh, during our spring semester at Bravo High School. Um, I think it's great. The kids, you know, are going to be engaged because kids are so uh, interested and engaged with music. We're really excited and can't wait to teach the course. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. Not only is it available to our students, we have 1,800 students at our school, but because it's in our district and it's approved course in our district, that we've got uh, 140,000 high school students in LA Unified School uh, District. So wow. any any high school in our district could offer this course. Uh, and because it was approved by the University of California uh, as part of uh, the college entrance requirements, uh, you know, class that could be taken by students to uh, qualify as part of a sequence of courses to go to the University of California or the Cal State University campuses, which includes UCLA, which was just named the number one public university in the in the country. Um, uh, it potentially is available to uh, any high school to adopt in the state of California. We have 400 school districts um, with high schools in the, in the state of California. And that means that there's about 1.7 million students in California who potentially could take this class at some point. That's oh, really amazing. It. Hey, Stevie, you it. come a long way since that teacher brought his uh, bebop records into the into Blackboard Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that scene. <laughs> come a long way since my, my music teacher let me play the first Who album. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you deal with the grade level? Did you leave it leave it a little bit flexible for a couple of different grade levels? or? Yeah. It's a social studies elective, so it really can be open to any grade uh, within high school. I think we're going to be leaning towards uh, the upper grades because that's when they have more of an opportunity to take electives. Um, but uh, any high school student could feasibly take it. Oh, good. At the, at the risk of but sounding old, which I am, but uh, do the kids, like, not know any of these rock and roll songs because they're just, like, high school kids now? and they're. You know, I had, a, I had a girl and she's wearing a Nirvana t-shirt. This happened a couple of years ago. And I asked her, oh, oh you, you like Nirvana? And she's like, "What's who's Nirvana? I just like the shirt. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and that's Nirvana. So you, you go back even further than that. Wow. Yeah, there's not, a, you know, there are some kids who definitely listen to uh, some classic rock and some old stuff, but a lot of the kids uh, don't listen to that stuff. And I think it's really great to expose them. Um, I've taken some of the curriculum and I've made Spotify playlists so I can, share a playlist with the kids and say, you know, here's what we're going to be studying for this unit. Here's your playlist. Listen to this. Um, and I have them write about what they're listening to and what they, you know, 
feel about each song. Um, and some of the kids, they really get into it and they get to discover new stuff they haven't listened to before. So did, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you do the whole history or, or are, are you doing it more like LA, LA centric? You know what I mean? I know I do the whole history, but I think I try to, I start with kind of the wide and bring it into LA. So at the end, um, we uh, hopefully can do some kind of that, that documentary that's uh, in the curriculum. They look at some of the local music that they have within their city. And we're hoping to get some uh, guest speakers uh, from the local scene. I know that I think I've met Henry, Henry Diltz, uh, and maybe Robbie. Whoops. I don't know what just happened Nothing. over the years. Yeah. Oh, there we are. And, uh, well, that was uh, you know that was the original idea. That. Yeah, that that was the original idea I had. I I hoped eventually to have, you know, such such coverage in, in so many schools or in classrooms that that any any band on tour could actually stop into a school, and sit in on a class and 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 and, and take part in in that class. I mean, that's still one of our goals. You know, eventually to to do that, and um, cool. that's why we cover we try to cover all of the genres. It could be anybody, you know, that's just, it's wonderful for the artists and it's wonderful for the kids. And it doesn't matter whether the kids are familiar with it or not. I think they, they enjoy it anyway, you know, and uh, it'll make the teachers, you know, really look even, even cooler, you know. And the timeliness and the relevance of, of this, uh, because of the situation we're in, because of distance learning, uh, it's going to be something that I think kids are going to really be able to connect to. And it really kind of, we're going to be able to take advantage of the fact that, you know, we're online, that they have access, you know, at their fingertips, they're going to already be able to get to the online curriculum, uh, music videos, and so on. And if we're doing something just like what we're doing right now, where we can bring some speakers in and guests, guests in from really kind of anywhere in the country. Uh, and then eventually when we get back to being live, uh, it'll be it'll be exciting to have, you know, live appearances too, if that's possible. <laughs> I, you know, I also wanted to mention there was just today, you know, I heard that, uh, you know, speaking of the timeliness, uh, there was a story that uh, uh, the current uh, administration um, in Washington, D.C., uh, I guess is not too excited about the 1619 Project, the New York Times mm -hmm. Project, and they um, apparently established a 1776 commission to promote patriotic education. They don't really think that that 1619 is uh, is is patriotic and so somehow they wrangle themselves a national endowment of the humanities uh grant in order to uh fund that and the story on npr you know uh included a quote from um you know historians who are looking at it and there's one hassan kwame jeffries at ohio state university who said that they disagree with the pa the president's basic premise that studying america's flaws is somehow unpatriotic and the quote from Dr. Jeffries is, he says, that's absurd. The highest form of patriotism is critical analysis. And, you know, I, I, this is exactly what I think this curriculum does uh, and why I think it's so important, you know, for us right now at this time, you know, to be bringing this to, uh, to students. Well, it's, it's wonderful, man. And I hope, uh, I hope the word can spread, you know, and we, and we get that into as many classes as possible. Um, but we, we, we know from statistics that if a kid likes one single class or one single teacher, it'll keep them in school, you know, and that's one of our goals is to improve the graduation rate in high school, you know, and deal, deal with this dropout epidemic that's going on. So we're hoping to do that. And, and, and obviously the more schools we're in, uh, the more likely that is to have an effect. So we really want to thank you two guys. Uh, what a wonderful wonderful thing you've done. Yeah, you just gave me hope. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. And Stevie, especially you for, for having this vision and uh, oh, awesome, you know, bringing this. It's such an important uh, uh, project. Well, it's exciting to see it coming alive. We've been working on it for 15 years and uh, it's really starting to, starting to, uh, you're starting to see it, you know, in, in, its, in its practical use. So it's yeah. really exciting. So thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Guys. Thank you guys. Thank you.